This episode is brought to you in partnership with Wacom. Across the globe, learning is still handwriting-centric, especially in mathematics and science. This can make the shift to digital tasks challenging. Many schools are seeking effective apps and hardware to ensure a smoother transition for digital learning, especially for STEM lessons. Expanding digital pen and ink technology from teachers to students opens up new possibilities for communication and collaboration in and out of the classroom. Using pen-enabled devices, teachers and students can explain complex concepts, take notes, provide feedback, and show their work quickly and easily. Wacom pen displays and tablets easily plug in to the existing IT equipment in the classroom, enabling members of the class to interact with the digital content being shared. The teacher never even needs to turn their back on the class. Collaboration is simple when working on shared documents and apps with the digital pen. There's no new software to learn. You just work with the pen on the screen or tablet instead of the mouse and keyboard on your computer. As educators, myself, Steve and Ben have all integrated the use of Wacom technology into where we've worked in education, into colleges and schools, and we have seen the benefits for ourselves. So go check it out for yourself. Uh, The link is in the show notes for this episode. Good evening. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Edge of Futures podcast. This is episode 201. We've gone over that big threshold. So last week we obviously celebrated episode 200. Thanks so much for those of you who have listened to all of them. Um, I reckon uh, my mum probably has and uh, that's probably it. But thanks mum. Thanks mum for listening. Uh, and we are on, and mum's been a guest on the epi- on, on, on the podcast. Do you remember that one, Dan? Those, I know you say that's a strange one. I do, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. I've got no so, comments. No comments. <laughs> so it's episode two hundred and one. Um, we are. It's it's super close to Christmas. It's been freezing. I don't know about you lads, but um, I got up this morning uh, to to. Uh, I think I went to play. Did I go to play squash? Whatever it was, and it was minus four point five degrees in the uh, in the in the in the town of Oswald Twistle this morning. It's cold, isn't it? Yes, it was snowing today. We were, Did you have snow? We went out to, there's a, <laughs> I don't know what it's called. It's like a, it's a, called a living museum. That's it. It's called Beamish. It's in uh, County Durham. And it's like, it's a whole town. And it's like you're living in like 150 years ago. Um, and it's like people like dress up. Like education and... system. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we have a Beamish. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it's, 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 it's amazing. So it's, a, it's like, you've, there's a town, there's a, you can travel out on the tram, and there's a like it's an old style tram. You go to like a farm, um, and there's, they're just they're building a 1950s town at the minute. It's just, it's it's absolutely amazing. But yeah, we took the kids to see All Executive Leadership Day at North East Partnership. It sounds like <laughs> um, I know it's really it's, it's hilarious, like living in the northeast because night the the new 1950s town is essentially just the town from up the road. Yes, they opening the pit. In, in, in that in the northeast, the 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 the, 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 the just give the go ahead that they're, they're going to oh, open a pit for the over first in time. Is it Cumbria? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, another that's my, that's my completely different part. Part. <laughs> Well, it's, they're all exactly the same. Like literally, not moved on. But there is a, there's actually a pit in the, in this living museum as well. Uh, but yeah, we took the kids there to see to see Santa today. They had like a traditional nice. Santa thing going on, so we took them there. But yeah, it started snowing. I couldn't believe it. Love like full-on proper snow. Um, yeah, magical afternoon. Got to yeah, love it. Was... You got to love it. And Steve, I know you went last Friday, didn't you, to uh, to see Santa with the kids? Yeah, and then uh, taking the kids to the Polar Express next week on the Polar Express. So that nice. should be pretty cool. But yeah, it's cold. Um, not cold enough for socks yet, but it's, uh, it's pretty cold. <laughs> Never cold enough for socks for you, Steve. No, I'm from Yorkshire. We're pretty much still vest and a, and a, and a pair of shorts at minus five. So... But to be to be honest though, to be honest, like um, I, I do think about like this this cost of living crisis for us Northerners. I know it's a re- I know it is a real challenge for us Northerners. It's just you just put another jumper on, don't we? It's just like this is this is what we deal with. We de- we deal with cold and we're cool with cold. My house, my kids are like used to freezing cold. They get an hour in the morning and they get an hour at night time with some heating on sometimes um, if they're lucky. And I've got a little uh, gas heater yeah, but- underneath here. 
They've only lost the tips of three fingers, but they'll yeah, be fine. Who cares? Who cares about you? Don't uh, the last, when, when Ben took him to see Santa Claus, you <laughs> thought it was working. Uh, the, the, bud, the budge, you passed out because literally because of the gas, but they just wow. didn't see the message and had to claw their way out. So, yeah, it's a bit of, uh, it's pretty oh, cold, but it's uh, it's nice, isn't it? It's Christmas. It, 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 We're it, it, doing it, it, nothing for northern stereotypes here. Should we, yeah, we should are. We... Oh, last week we had flat caps and whippets. Remember I that? Just say, <laughs> just the whippet. just gonna, I need to go. On, we need to uh, make sure this isn't a long one tonight because I do need to take the whippet out. So um, it's a uh, it's a uh, fantastic tonight to be joined by um, it just uh, just it, people say to me, "How do you find the guests?" And I just say. Well, we all say, well, we're just cheeky and we connect in with people and we find people who are interesting and we uh, DM them on LinkedIn or Twitter or send them an email and just say, would you be interested? And <coughs> some of these people are just super kind and decide to respond and not ignore us. Uh, so we've got a guest tonight who, uh, when we talk about, and he talks about some of his background, you'll, you'll acknowledge that this is a pretty epic find and we're super excited to be talking to our guest this evening. So should we, should we bring uh, Martin in? Hi, Martin. Thanks for joining us on the podcast this evening. Uh, I know that you are uh, sat in your living room with a cool piece of art behind you. Could you just give our guests a little bit of an insight into you and uh, and, and a little bit of your background? Um, and by the way, I know that there's loads of stuff to go into, so we are going to dig into all of it, so or, or lots of it. All right. No, thanks. Great for having me on. Thanks for having me on. And um, now you, you did get me from under a stone, actually. So, so don't, don't build me up so much. Um, and it is it is freezing here today, by the way, as well. I was listening to what you were saying before. I said to my wife this morning, you know, uh, did my clothes come out of the fridge before I put them on today? Because it felt so cold. But but anyway, um, no, really great to be here. And great to be here with you, Steve and Dan and, 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 and Ben as well, obviously. Um, yeah, a little bit about me. Um, I've just always been passionate about creativity. Um, I, I just always thought it was crucial to my life and to my upbringing so wherever I've been that's been at the heart of my work so my love for music took me to working with the likes of uh, world music artists um, working in Cuba working with the Buena Vista Social Club then working with other artists working with Miley Cyrus um, when, when no one knew her and launching her and then, then my love for and, and actually working with the Muppets you know uh, so that was a fun time and then my love for technology took me to just being a bit of a tech geek first, uh, being a digital marketeer, and then ending up at Apple and starting something brand new called iTunes um, at the very, very start and being on the launch team there, working with Steve and the team there in Europe. And, and my love for food, um, which I've always loved cooking, it always drew me, in, drew me into my culture and my roots in Peru, in South America, where I originally came from. I now live in London. Um, that love for food uh, took me to, <laughs> drove me to being an entrepreneur and, and launching a restaurant and a, food, a, a few restaurants and then a, a food business and then writing two best-selling cookbooks. Um, and all of that, um, you know, was intertwined with a, a background of growing up in Lima um, and then moving to Leicester in the mid 80s because the challenges in Lima through terrorism, through racism, through inequality, took me to, 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 to Leicester, studying in Leeds and then moving to London. So I've only ever be, lived in places beginning with L. Just, 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 that's a caveat. So, you know, if anyone ever wants me to work anywhere, it's got to be starting with L. But no, I'm based now here uh, and I'm, 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 um, I'm proud and, and grateful to, to have been asked to joined the Institute of Imagination as, as their CEO uh, over a year and a half ago. And that's because I'm bringing all that background, which also includes that challenging time that I had in Peru and moving over here, which then also led me to working in education, particularly in charities and social enterprises, alongside this sort of professional sort of job that I had um, at different companies and, and when I had my own sort of entrepreneurial business. So so yeah, so that that uh, that work in education with different charities, children's charities, sort of all came together, you know, at the IOI, which I'm very pleased to to lead now with with a phenomenal team. And and you've been in the G and you've been in GQ, is that right? Were you in GQ? 
uh, <laughs> I was, I was. I know, uh, front, I know you want the cover model, but I don't know. But you were yeah, the bit. Uh, no, no, I could have been, you know. Uh, well, I definitely wouldn't ever have been. There was a time no. I did. I did modelling for five minutes when I was about sixteen, like my son is doing now. But no, I, I was. Um, I was a food entrepreneur of the year. Food, sorry, food innovator of the year is an award that I won at, in GQ. And um, yeah, the, the, the wonderful, you know, amazing superstar chef Nobu, if you if you know those wonderful restaurants, he he presented me with the award. So yeah, that was pretty cool at the time. Cool. I I, I want to ask a question about Miley Cyrus. I'm a huge country fan. Uh, for those people <laughs> listening, like, they're absolutely obsessed with that. But what uh, from? Peru. My, I, I, I've never been to Peru myself, but my, my mum has. Absolutely loved it. Obsessed with it. Um, but yeah, it sounds fascinating. And to Leicester, and then to, to where you're at. So, just walk us through. Like, you know, obviously where you're at, and we're going to get into your current role and everything else you've got in. But how how did the learnings from every different bit prepare you for working with somebody like Steve Jobs or and everything that he did, and how has that love of learning and the love of food and, and, and everything else now led you to the path of, of Institute of Imagination, do you think? So I feel that um, I feel that there were interesting people throughout my life that were either coaches or mentors or teachers. And I looked up to these people and they gave me the space to be creative, to think of, of how to express my, my creativity and, and my passion for those. So, food, music, everything with the senses. Because I guess I lived at the beginning of my life in a quite a siege mentality because it was, it was a challenging, violent place. Your senses are really bright and really like, you're looking out for everything. So, so all the senses. And so, so I guess my career developed through those different senses, which rather than sort of be in a corner and be sad about it, and I did that a lot as well, by the way, but I also sort of turned those things into opportunities and passions and just love. And so, so that bit around, as I said, about food, it's like, why can't I be a z -list celebrity chef? Uh, but at least I have a fashion for, for, for cooking and certainly Peruvian food. And no one knows about it in the UK. So let's go for it. And suddenly I'm, uh, you know, I'm, I'm on TV cooking as, as a chef <laughs> and I'm not, you know, all I've got is my passion and my communication. Um, and then we and then we build a business around that, and, and it was just fantastic. And so Peruvian food became a thing that that now people sort of are beginning to understand about music. The same, you know, I I sort of grew up thinking. I grew up listening to uh, to chicha and cumbia and salsa and merengue and and all these sort of Latin styles. And I'm, I moved over here, and it's like it's all about Oasis and the Beatles, and it's like. Well, I know about those because my dad was actually half English. My dad was English. So I, I dig all that. But actually, there's more to life than just US and UK rock. Um, there's actually, you know, funk in Thailand and uh, sukus in Zaire and, and the Congo and, and, and you know, Afrobeat in, in Nigeria. And so let's talk about that and let's, let's promote that as well. So that's what drove me to working as a as a first as a you know a junior assistant in a small little record company in bath uh, and then working in cuba with artists and then ending up working with miley cyrus and you know and having to field off her dad when he wanted a gig as well <laughs> yeah in interesting i think i'm i'm hearing here this this whole like um this thread around creativity and i don't want to just just talk about it from that perspective i heard you say that there and obviously as you look at the thread through the work that you've done it's just people would say well how does cooking and music and education and charity work and how do these things link well the, the answer is probably around that ability to express that level of creativity and i think um we we know and we've talked about often one of our heroes, so Ken Robinson, talking about whether schools kill creativity and that brilliant TED talk that talks about that. But I know that that what it seems like from listening to to you and to from reading about you that this idea of creativity is uh, is integral. Absolutely, and 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 sort of Steve sort of asked how did that lead you to the IOI and 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 it is, and I was sort of trying to sort of say that you know. I had great teachers in some places, but not a great learning system at the time when I was growing up. 
but certain teachers did inspire me. In work, I had certain people that did inspire me. And, and, so, and then also outside of work, in, in just in the context of what I was reading, and I'm, I'm a very curious person, and I'm also a person that's not, that sort of listens to lots of different opinions and try to think, you know, in opposites as well as outside of the box, as well as really directly and generally. So, so all, of, all of that comes into the thinking when you think about the power of imagination. Imagination, to me, leads to, you know, it's the fertile ground for creativity. Then that can lead to ideas, ideas generating, problem solving, solutions finding, leads to innovation, leads to entrepreneurship, or leads to just solving tiny problems that might be so personal and so important for you, or might be, you know, massive problems that can change the world. And that's, you know, that's utter innovation. So either of those can either save your life or, or, or change and transform other people's lives. And, and that's at the core of what we want to do at the IOI, create that space, give those tools, give those opportunities to empower children to, 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 be, to be imaginative, to use their creativity and to thrive in a, in a world that is changing so, so much in a world that we absolutely don't know what it's going to be in 20 years' time, or certainly primary school children don't know what jobs they'll be out there in 20 years' time. And that idea around innovation is uh, he's, he's, he's so hard to kind of predict. And obviously the, the whole systems that we are a part of, not just education, but all the systems are are designed for some kind of like maintenance and, and, and sustenance and keeping things as they are management, but then also that level of innovation and, and, and thinking not necessarily outside the box, but thinking differently and looking at a variety of viewpoints. It just doesn't, doesn't land itself naturally into the systems because the systems are dependent on being engineered in such a way that they are productive and efficient and, and those kind of things. And actually, innovation requires time it requires effort it requires things that you, you you've got to take away from the core of maintenance and management haven't you yeah and innovation is just one area by the way you know, i know we're talking about it, and that's crucial and innovation you could say is also problem solving in general and and new ideas and that's also also good but but you know but what's happening with the system right now is that it's stifling you know mental health and well-being it's putting incredible pressures on children saying what do you want to be when you grow up now tell me or or or, or do this exam or do that exam it's, it's got a huge focus on numeracy and literacy because there's so many different agendas that are not a child's agenda but they're a variety of adults with a particular agendas whether they're financial or political that have been sort of blasted through this system to put that weight on a child's shoulders. So, so we, we, you know, we think that, you know, if we think that imagination is the superpower of the 21st century, we, we really think that, you know, it, it, it's so powerful. It allows us to look at, to look at the past. It allows us to think of the present and think of the context with which we live in and, and how to adapt within it. And, and it allows us to, to time travel and think of the future. You know, uh, uh, and we know that future's not there yet, but if we can have a super open mind and imagine what it could be like, that builds that builds aspiration, that builds mental health and resilience because it allows you to think outside the box. Um, yeah. So it's, it's all of those things coming together. And I think we're trying to be, we're trying to put pigeonhole children into a rigidity that existed for a long, long time around work that really doesn't exist. You've just talked about this slasher mentality. I don't know, you're not going around that. No, not from the other bit, but you have been uh, this, slash this, slash this, slash this. You've been so many different things at, at different times, but also maybe at the same time, I'm sure you still have a passion for cooking and you're still doing all of that stuff, but you're also leading uh, an institute and you're doing all of those kind of things and you're involved in charities. You, you're not just one thing. And I think at times the people that are guiding children that are asking them to make those decisions, they're doing it based on their experience. And that's fine because it's you do things based on your experience, but we just need to set out the fact that the world is currently very different to the world that we went through and will be very, very different for a world that we're preparing our young people for. And I think we just I think a lot of people 
right on wrongly. There's no criticism of of careers and certain things in school, but I think they're just saying, oh well, what what do you want to be? Do I have to be one thing? Do I have to be one thing forever, or do I have to be one thing at the same time? Like you know, it, it just seems a bit. No, I, I don't want to say archaic, but I think it's just too rigid for the world that we're now in and will be definitely in, in like I say, twenty years time. Well, 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 you know, in the past for the industrial revolution, certain few, a few minority chose how to create this system and created the system and it's not really changed because they wanted to put people in places and keep them there. And that, that story has gone. You know, yeah, I'm, I'm an example. I, I changed, uh, you know, not just, not just, um, not just jobs, but careers every, every two or three years and, and sectors every two or three years. Cause I'm curious and fascinated. And I understand that I'm not that job. I'm, I'm something else. In, underneath that I'm a kind caring you know was an employee now I'm an employer was a team member continue to be a team member I can be a leader but I can also be a be of service you know so it's so I'm all of those things and that can be adaptable and in the world we live in you know I've worked in sectors that I worked I worked in the physical record industry and then it disappeared <laughs> so luckily I was like oh I quite like technology Luckily, I was one of the people that went, I'm going to go with technology. And so I sort of evolved into that. But there was a lot of people in that industry that, that actually were, you know, died like dinosaurs. And now the music industry has evolved into something else. But, you know, everything evolves into something else. And you've got to have that adaptability, that curiosity, that insight to sort of foresee where you can go. Yes. Uh, yes, you do. You do that. That it's that <laughs> level of. I suppose it's 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 enough foresight, isn't it? You're not. We're not talking about like seeing ten steps down the road. You're not talking about five years down the road. You're talking about like, oh, there's something here that might might be something, and it's something I'm interested in. And you know, I I think this quite a lot in terms of my own my own personal passions. I get involved in all sorts of things and I think, mm, is that going to land anywhere? It doesn't really matter because I'm interested in it. So NFTs and Web3 yeah. and all that kind of stuff. I I, I do genuinely believe that's going to go somewhere and crypto is going to go somewhere, but I'm interested and I want to learn about it. So that in itself is the destination. The learning is the destination as opposed to learning so that I can make money from it or learning. So that's that's what we're talking yeah. about as much as anything else. Yeah, and, and, you know, purpose purpose as an area of a need of a human being has grown so much in the last, you know, even through the pandemic, many, many people were questioning, what is our purpose? What is my purpose? You know, those people that are telling me to do X, Y, and Z, you know, I'm not really happy. Even if the money's good, I'm not really happy. So what is my purpose? That then leads to, to happiness and well-being. So a lot of people have been questioning that. So... Yes, it's, I mean, at the heart of what we do is is understanding and enjoying the learning process. But but through creativity and imagination, we, you know, through our through our work, through our programs, our platforms, our products, we we sort of help children develop those core set of competencies and skills. That, of course, there can be a focus on numeracy and literacy and and you know key skills. But those you call them softer skills. They're they're crucial, vital. Um, skills they're, they're you know they're, they're, it's an essential faculty of of being a human being and, and defies us away from other species imagination so those set of competencies you know they're 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 manifested as you journey through our program so so what does that mean it means original thought which which leads to creativity it means being resilient to change and, and unlocking challenges and that that leads to problem solving an aspiration, using your imagination to predict into the future, and that can that can improve your own social mobility, hopefully. And curiosity is is critical thinking, which is which helps you to be able to challenge and and recognize something different that that might not necessarily be right. So this can help you in life, in understanding the future of work, uh, how to understand new roles that you might enjoy by listening to yourself and and, and taking the route that you want. It's really empowering. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, it's it's interesting because I think we talk about this a lot, but over over two hundred shows now, every now and then we we start to see kind of a trend over over a few episodes. Mm -hmm. And even though we 
the the three of us go off and we book our own guests. We we um, we there could be people from all over the world in completely different industries, different sectors, uh, and that's kind of what the past few weeks we've had. We've had a, a health futurist um, from London who looks at the future of the the healthcare system. We've had a um, someone who coaches uh, business people and runs his own coffee shop, um, and and kind of what what you say in there is 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 it, it's, it's just that it's we've discussed it over the last few weeks really and I think and you're bringing kind of I think a new side to this but it's that whole idea and I think what the health futurist we had on mentioned um there's a book called by Reed Hoffman called the startup of you and he took in in there he, he kind of writes about how how we need to we need to live our lives almost like we are a startup and and yeah. and and he, and he and he talks about the intersection of of passions values and personal assets and 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 it it caused us with one of our blogs a few weeks ago in our newsletter we we wrote about this and how 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 the education system could change if we actually started not just to focus on the the knowledge or the content to get into the student but actually how to let the let the student be able to discover and and start to grasp their what their what their individual values are, what their passions are in life, and and what and start to develop the assets that they that they're going to have, and then and then actually yeah. then get them to to understand what the supply and demand looks like when it in in that mix as well, and you, you you're setting them up for life, and even though you've haven't and you've never asked them what they want to do, you've never asked them, you've never pushed a job on them, you've never they haven't even passed an exam. But but just allowing them to to have a glimpse of that at least um, could could set them off on a on a whirlwind of a, a adventure for their lives. Yeah, and it's you know I I, I think I think that analogy of uh, being a startup or a scale up or a start down or a scale down. You know, we talk a lot about being failure positive. It sounds a bit buzzy, I know, but. We talk about risk and failure quite a lot and how important it is. And it's not like because of startups and in the tech world, it's cool to be, you know, to fail and then, you know, start again and you, you, you've earned your stripes. No, that, you know, this is not a boys club. This is, you know, we're, we're girls and boys, we're men and women. We're, we're from different places and we're completely fallible and, and, and we make mistakes. And so it's got to be a space for that. There's got to be a space for for scaling down and, and failure and and all those beautiful things that can then give you opportunities and, and open doors into the future. If if you've got those, if you've got that resilience and that self confidence, if you've got that curiosity and that creativity to um, to think think of something else and think in the future and bring the bring your past into it. Yeah, I think we we interviewed. Uh, Gavin McCormack a couple of weeks ago, and he talked about um, he, he was a Mont- he's a Montessori principal or he was a Montessori principal, and he's he's founded a, a, a an online learning platform that kind of supports those kind of practical learning, curiosity, discovery learning, and uh, it, it it got some um, some interesting responses online. Uh, Purely because there's a there's an idea of whether whether it's a bit too radical to try and be this let's teach that broader skills and do that through discovery and creativity and imagination and stuff and and I I know as we get into talking to you a little bit about the, the programs and the work that you do at the Institute of Imagination I wonder if um, I wonder if where that sits with it because obviously the traditional education system is very rigid. Um, and he's very prescriptive and linear. So this kind of stuff, creativity is very, very rarely linear. I've got two girls that are learning to play piano. One of them who's learning to do, uh, both of them actually learning languages. Um, I've been in that world as well around learning creative skills. They they don't, uh, it, 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 even though there's foundations, it doesn't always work linearly, does it? No, no, no. And it's, look, the whole of the system is not broken. No, oh, that's I don't know what's happened there, but it's just me and both you, Lefty. Both Ben, both Ben, <laughs> while you're paying attention, both Ben and uh, our guest have been thrown out. I think Ben's probably and he's back in the background. Oh, he's back. 
What I happened? Think never, that has never happened before. <laughs> but it threw two people out at the same time. Yeah. Oh, well. So, uh, hopefully we can come back in. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're still live, so uh, hopefully you're enjoying it so far. <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll do How some wizardry. Here's Martin here. Yeah. No idea what happened there, Martin. Apologies for that. This That's is why we right. do it. This is why we do it as live. It's all good fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. Shall I just carry on, Ben? I think. Yeah. You went first, and I was. I still seeing Steve and Dan. So. Sorry. Um, yeah. Yeah. Carry on. Yeah. I'll just carry on. Um. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's not. It's not linear, and there. There is. There are some good bits in in our education system. You know. Um. I heard about a report. That, that people were doing in in Finland in some Finnish schools and and they said their you know their 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 productivity their results their their levels of happiness was was really high because actually between classrooms they they had a break for ten minutes and they were they were encouraged to play outside uh, in minus ten freezing cold weather you know just simple things like that you know allowing that that space for um, a space to wander and to to, to, to mind wander and to daydream, to, to physically play. The interconnection between the brain, the heart, the spirit uh, and physical body, just so crucial. So there's many things. So I would love to be in a position um, to be able to, to affect all kinds of aspects in terms of our learning system. But, but one thing that runs through it all is, is creativity and imagination. So, so you know, that's why we're, we're fascinated by what um, you know, the new school is doing XP in Doncaster, the green school in Thailand, um, you know, Geelong Grammar School in, in Melbourne and, and all kinds of other wonderful education establishments that, that I think are fascinating. Um, but, but we have something special and we, we, sort, of, we sort of blend in and, and, and support um, educators and teachers, um, classrooms, parents, community leaders. So, so we play a role in, in different parts in small ways and, and increasingly, hopefully, in influential ways. It's interesting. I just want to touch upon the, the, the statement you made around Finland and, and there's some wonderful books out there in regards to you know, their approach and the phenomenal model of learning. And, and, and I remember, it must be about six months ago, having a conversation with um, an educator in the UK that, that absolutely fine if somebody disagrees with you know, your opinion. That's That's debate it's conversation it's i like it uh, but their view was like well i wouldn't hang your hat on everything that finland's doing because uh, they're not doing great other their education system and i said oh, okay what 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 would identify as as, as not doing well now as, as, as being successful their exam results aren't coming out as what they used to be and i said well i i think ultimately i think that's probably why we're getting it wrong um, in certain aspects, you know, rightly or wrongly. I, I, and I said, I said, the benefit, and I said, the, the thing that I love about Finland and their approach, and I spent some time over there, I want to say 2016, but I think it was actually before that for a couple of weeks at Hagerhelly University, working with their approaches, looking at their, their project based learning, looking at the people sitting exams compared to people uh, working in industry, those models. Uh, and I said, they don't think they're getting it wrong. I said, the reason they don't think they're getting it wrong is because they're not basing success on exam results. They're basing it on doing something correct. And actually, we're looking at going, oh, I don't like that because of the results at the end. And I said, they view their education system and learning and the, the, the benefit of it as something very, very different to the way that we do it. It's just the fact that we hold them up into esteem at the PISA test or whatever you want to call it. I said, that's not their outcome that they base their education system on. Um so yeah, I was just interested. I was just fascinated. I just got a hook then in terms of. I, I just think the benefits are the bits where we step outside of the realm of what success means, because success is, is 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 varies based on opinion. But the ones that you just mentioned, XP, you can still do be shackled, and you can still do your exam system. And Agora is another one in in Holland and some of the schools that you mentioned. But actually, developing a rounded individual that is is right for many many different facets of of, of life not just passing an exam is yeah. just is is something that i suppose we all talk about and aspire to and hopefully at some point we get it right yeah. globally do we measure mental health do we measure suicide rates do we mention you know all of all of those things that have have an effect on on someone's uh, opportunities and uh and and and, you know, and future so so yeah 
There's many, many things to, to measure um, and there's many ways to measure. So we, we focus on creativity and aspiration because we think that those two are measurable and they're very relative to what we do as a small organization. And um, we can't do everything. We can't measure everything. So we've got to be really focused on that. Yeah, definitely, definitely. And how do you, how do you think, linking into that, how do you think your roles in, in other charity and, and other work that you've done, how do you think they feed into to, to the way that you kind of lead and, and the kind of vision of the organisation currently, you know, as it's evolving as CEO? Uh, do you feel that you've taken bits of, of learning um, across the board and tried to implement them in, in, in different ways? Yeah, sure. I mean, you know, um, working at working at uh, iTunes when it was a startup, when there was literally five of us in the European team that started with with not much IT support, frankly, <laughs> in Europe, um, and then growing that uh, with you know with with the knowledge of of the different people, not just certainly not just mine, but the other four and many others, and scaling that to to what it became just even three years later and how to grow that team with a tech platform um, that helps with our platforms work um, working at Disney and you know Disney I was running one of Disney's businesses in EMEA Europe Middle East and Africa um, but Disney starts with a story just for example Tron or Toy Story and then that story is told in a multiple facet of ways that could be through a film, that could be through a TV show or, or through the Disney Channel, that could be through a computer game, through a, through a music uh, album or compilation or soundtrack, that could be through a book, um, a, 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 that could be through a, a ride at a park. So, so there's a 360 approach with how you tell a story. Um, it's called exploiting the IP as well in a crude way. But it's also called being synergistic and how those things work together and how they're offered to a general public without that general public going, God, there's just too much coming from all this stuff. And so in a very, very small way, I road tested that when I started a restaurant business built around Peruvian food. And through that, we also started a record company, an art gallery, an ingredients company. And, and all of a sudden, there was a family of things that people could get into. Um, and they could watch the YouTube channel, read the book uh, and get things for free. Some things they could pay for, some things they could look at, some things they could listen to, some things they could eat. And it's just a lot of fun. And again, it's, it's linking all those senses that I'm so passionate about as well. And so that the IOI, we have, firstly, we have a hybrid approach towards the learning that we, we you know, we collaborate with, with children and with teachers and with community leaders and parents in that we do one in one one you know um, face to face workshops and activities then we also deliver these through our schools program so we work with a variety of schools always in marginalized disadvantaged communities around the UK sometimes in different parts of the world but we do that digitally so we do live broadcasts where we teach a train or sometimes where we beam directly into a classroom and we have different themes that are pretty cool that are not just they're not just standard subjects, but they are themes like save, make, reinvent, uh, which is which is all around the circular economy and understanding that for a five to 11 year old, which is another theme is called Imagine Me, Imagine You, which is all around diversity and um, understanding yourself within the context of others and, and, and celebrating our differences. So, so this is this is all about EDI and inclusion, and, and challenging subjects that are that, that some teachers are not 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 still not not very well versed to understand because we're all evolving in that area as well to understanding that. So, so that's what we do with schools, and that program is is open for anyone. It's free, so you just have to sign up through our website, um, and that's our schools program. But then we also do work with community groups in, in really, really tough neighborhoods around the UK. Um, and sometimes they're, they're, we work on coding, but we work with Lego or we work Microbit Foundation with some of their technology, but it's the way we do it. 
it's the approach that's really cool. It's failure positive, it's collaborative, it's empowering. It's not top-down education, it's, it's bottom-up empowering and learning. And it's not, um, it's not undisciplined. It's not just willy-nilly, people can go to sleep. It's, you know, it's just fun. It's learning through play. It's learning through doing and making. It's using your hands as well as your mind. It's using technology, but also getting busy and standing up and, and you know, doing a, making a, a junk bot, you know, using junk to make robots, you know, and, and stuff like that. So, so it's really engaging. So, so the kids that come to our workshops or are engaged in our work, just absolutely thriving and kind of, you know, if, they're, if they have several interactions, they can start to think, gosh, yeah, I could, I could be an engineer or I could be a computer programmer or I could be an astronaut or, you know, they, they come out saying things like that. Not that we ask them, but they just say, I, I feel like really inspired about this. And, and just, I, I, I was going off and I was going to talk about a, a book that I recently, um, I, was, I always say read, but it was an audible um, by um, a guy called Will, G uh, G uh, hopefully I'm pronouncing his Guido or Galido. Um, and it talk, it, it was, I, I'm a fan of Simon Sinek. I love Simon Sinek in regards to his approach and, and, and some of his earlier work. And he, uh, he popped up saying that he'd, he kind of recommended it and, and had read it. And it's Unreasonable Hospitality. So he's, Will had been in uh, the in restaurant industry. I think he started mm -hmm. going up. He wasn't a chef, but he'd then taken, um, is it 11 Madison Avenue to be world's number yeah, one yeah. and did all of that. And he talks about the difference between service and hospitality, the difference between black mm. and white and, and colour in regards to your approaches. Mm. And I think what I was trying – and how I, it connected with me was – this whole thing of, you know, uh, and one of the most things, the biggest things that I remember from the book is talking about that the kids that you're working with and young people and everything that we do, they're not necessarily going to remember what we say or what we do, but I think they remember what we, how, how we made them feel. And I think that is for everything, and, you t and it links back to what you said about, you know, these teachers, you were in an education system, but the thing that, that really resonated right at the beginning with me was I had some wonderful teachers i had some wonderful leaders and i think what you were saying was i, I can't necessarily remember what they did but I remember how they made me feel when they were coaching me and they developed me and i think that's what and that's what i see that and i love the fact that you're kind of taking the wonderful nature of what these children want to be they might not know what it is but letting them flourish through their out of their imagination linking it back to disney love the film hook by the way where they're eating nothing and just imagining <laughs> it all of that kind of thing and they're, they're taking an empty ball and developing into whatever they want it to be, I absolutely love it. And 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 I know we're going to talk about it in a bit. But so when you say your partner was how I know you say it's free. How do people get involved in it? Because I'm guessing everybody wants to be. I'm sure yeah. there's a capacity thing. Let's see whether we can challenge that. But how, how do they get involved? Because surely this is something that everybody must be doing and want to do. Well, well, well it, it should be. And what the institute, the institute of imagination ultimately does is makes people happy. Whether that's and it starts with teachers and it starts with parents and it starts with community leaders and. And if they're happy, they're going to, the children are going to be happy. And sometimes we work directly with children. So, 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 so that's, that's what we do. And, uh, and Guido, Guido is right. There's a difference between service uh, um, and, and hospitality. You know, service is what you do in the practical stuff. And that's, that's almost like the educational system, the formal side. And hospitality is the care and love and the attention and the empowerment you give to someone when you're, when you're welcoming them through the door and making them feel comfortable. And all of that is what you remember the most, um, actually. You know, the food's, you know, the food comes in, it's got to be good. Hopefully service is taking care of that. But, but it's all of that care and appreciation that comes from the chef as well as the, the pot wash, yeah. as well as certainly the receptionist or the person that's booked your call, yeah. um, book, booked your table. So, so it's, all, it's all part of that. Uh, and, and that phrase, of course, is from the, the phenomenal, um, joyous, uh, poet Maya Angelou. That is, it is about the way the way they make you feel, you know. Um, but people find out through about us through other educators. They know about us because we're we're involved in research. We've just started a, a really big research project with Dr. Penny Hay at, at Bath Spa University uh, and and various other professors of 
possibility and pro professor of creativity as well. Um, and um, and they work with us through, they find us through our website. They can, they can go on to um, ioi.london to sign up for our programs. We normally we normally sort of um, have an enrollment dates that, that are pretty open uh, and, and schools and teachers and head teachers can, can find out our, about our programs directly from, from my team, from us, um, and, and just sign on. We, we, as I said, we, we start, well, we started in, in Newham, in Lambeth, in a, in a, in a, in a borough that's, that's tough. And then we moved to different boroughs um, in London that that are um, more where, where where high levels of indices of deprivation um, are uh, high levels of free school meals um, where there are more marginalised disadvantaged children are, and then we're working across different parts of the country now. Um, but if you're a school, just get in touch. There is some flexibility. Um, you know this deficit, this poverty of opportunity of creativity and imagination exists in. It, it, in, it, it, in all kinds of schools, with all kinds of educators, it, it, in independent schools, in schools in some of the wealthiest countries as well as the, the, the poorest countries. So we're, we're open to, to trying what we're doing and, and working on our programs and offering them. But as a charity, we're, we begin with, with those, those, um, those different communities because actually we think that through our work, we can leapfrog a lot of, um, a lot of, a lot of other sort of barriers that are there with the children that we work with and support. Uh, I love this. Uh, I love this idea of it being an additional uh, supporting. We're not saying there's, there's, there's nothing that I'm picking up here from you or from the research we've done that's suggesting that, um, I, I, that that teachers are doing aren't doing enough. Actually, that's not the case at all. Teachers, big teachers can't, can they? They just it's just not the systems that we're in, the things that we're having to do. There's so much more that we've got to 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 do to to protect young people, to prepare young people, and I suppose to help young people find their purpose. It's really interesting what happened uh, to me today. Literally today, um, I was in a college that I'm doing some uh, some support work in uh, around a few projects. And um, this young man came over to me who was not that much of a young man, but uh, I've, I'll say he's a young man because it makes me feel like feel young as well. And he came over to me and I was having a conversation with with another member of staff who I know quite well. And he just he just uh, gave me give me a big hug. Uh, and I, I realized he was uh, an ex student of mine um, who is now teaching at the college he's lecturing at the college um and he just went i just want to i haven't seen you properly since uh, we left school but you were the person who gave me a chance at sixth form everybody else had said no you said we could have a chance because i was at a sixth form at the time um he, he went i don't say this lightly i think you saved my life because i've seen where my friends have gone and where, where they've ended up wow. and uh, you inspired me i talk about you i was talking about you this morning in the lesson and I, that, that, i'm not saying that for any other reason other than the fact of he he said I was talking about how um, how you gave me a chance, not the RE teaching that I did or the uh, the sociology teaching that I did or what I taught him. I think and and that's um, that's really that's really powerful. And I say that story not to bore small cut myself, but to just to say that actually um, the feeling that that gave me, knowing that now made almost all them years a little bit worthwhile. And 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 I, and I wonder whether there's a there's a there's maybe a call here, and this is probably the reason why we do the awards and all the stuff that we do already is because we acknowledge that teachers do a, have got a really hard job. Schools are in a really tough place, more now than ever. And actually, what, what you're trying to do is, is supplement that education and to support these brilliant teachers, these brilliant um, edu uh, educators, head teachers, principals who are trying their best in really difficult circumstances. And that's what um, that's what's really powerful, isn't it? It, it sure is. Where, where where is creativity and imagination, you know, in schools today? Where does it live? It, it, it should live across every single subject. It's it's a it's a it's an area in every single subject. But you know, even even the creative subjects have been squeezed and squeezed and squeezed. You know, the more you know that the subjects like you know, it's literacy and numeracy. Are, been given you know extreme targets 
uh, and teachers, um, you know, I was at, I was at BET this year, the school's an academy show. The biggest subject there was mental health for teachers because they, you know, post pandemic, they're exhausted. They are being asked to do so many things aside from teaching, to be a counselor, to be a policeman, to feed children, to do a, a whole myriad of things. So yeah, we, we, we sort of, you know, when we ask some teachers, they sort of think, why do I need creativity in my work? And it's like, wow, they've not even got that starting point. And then we ask other teachers and they say, God, thank goodness you're here because I, I, I knew I wanted this or I used to do more of this, but I've forgotten how to train my mind on this and how to develop this for my students. So that's what we bring. We reignite that spark and that inspiration that teachers could have around bringing creativity and imagination into all kinds of STEAM subjects or any subject as well. So that's, that's what we're there to do. Supporting, we're, we're, we're hopefully like a best friend, um, but with some skills that are really accessible so they can learn through our programs and also learn our sort of method, which, is, which has got bits of, of a variety of things of some of the great schools and, and educators that you've talked about, whether it's Martin Seligman or whether it's Steiner or Montessori or whether it's Summerhill or XP, you know, it's got bits of, of all of that in there. Agreed. Agreed. It's been a it's been a great conversation. I think it's one of those conversations that we could lead into um, and continue this conversation about where imagination fits, where creativity fits. I was a religious studies teacher, as was Dan. Um, and uh, often it feels like you're doing facts and figures and people pray this way and they go to this place and they do this. And, and it just when you it loses that um, that heart and that passion. And uh, it, it really feels like there's a there's an opportunity through the programs that you look that you're running here, but actually through the the conversation on this idea, m m more your the whole story of your life before Im <laughs> the Institute of Imagination is actually this idea of um, I want to explore something, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, I'll learn from the failure, uh, or I'll learn from not even failure. I'll learn from the experience, and then I'll take that into the next world uh, and the next and the next learning opportunity and i think as we uh as we kind of bring bring this to a close i wonder if there's anything from uh from your perspective martin that that you would um kind of point teachers in the direction of not necessarily just programs or how to set but like what teachers we've, we've acknowledged again today teachers do a wonderful job um we believe in them. We, we, there's no teacher bashing here. Never, ever, ever are we teacher bashing. We love teachers. We love what they do. Um, and, and now they're trying to manage. What, what, what kind of advice or tips or, 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 or ideas or guidance would you, would you give into, into that world with the experience that you've had across music, creativity, and, 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 and the work in the food industry and entrepreneurship as well? Gosh, that's, that's such a huge question. And, and no, we, we are, we're the best friend of a teacher. That's who we are. Um, but we're the best friend of anyone in the learning system, the educator, the parent, the, the community leader. Um, you know, my work is, and this is something I would tell any of my team and, and any friend um, as well as, as any teacher. Um, and this is always about trying to make sure you know what your, your boundaries might be and setting those clearly so that so that you can protect that and do do great work it's also about finding a space a time in this busy world where there's so much demand on your time from all the different activities that you do but, but particularly as a teacher how can you find the time you carve out that hour two hours where you can just where you can just daydream you know, I was talking to someone the other day and just really, really thinking about the power of boredom. The power of boredom. You know, it's just we, you know, young people just don't have it anymore because they are, they're just hooked to this thing and, and they're just, you know, it's just instant gratifying, chewing gum for the brain, you know, small little bits of video or, or text. What would happen if we just got bored for a while? Um, you know, the depths that we can go into our minds and our hearts would be so powerful. 
So, so I, I would encourage a teacher to do that because that would be as much personal development for them and well-being for them as it would be for, for the way they could construct a classroom uh, and the support that they might need outside of that and inspiration outside of that. So, um, so yes, and, and, and sort of before I go, I would just say we are a charity. We are, look, we are fundraising. We do have a three-year plan. We do have incredible programs, products, and platforms. And if anyone wants to support us on that, if there's any sort of funders out there, as well as educators that want to collaborate, please, please, uh, please contact us. That's brilliant. And and Martin, just just one last time, where how can people find out more and and contact you at the Institute of Imagination? Our website is www. Of course, um, dot ioi dot london it's very very simple my name is on there and so is so is everyone from my team we have a phenomenal phenomenal team particularly our experience and learning team which is the the heartbeat of our organization um a very well established a very um very very you know a, a team full of experience that that cares for for our work deeply and cares for this learning system and, and wants to work more with educators and teachers and, um, and politicians and, and other people involved in making a change. Yeah, and I think what we mentioned before, that kind of intersection between assets, passions, values, and I think you, you, your values are re- really come across strong and um, it's, you can really see that in, in the work that you do. And, and yeah, that's... Um, we're with you in, in advocating and, and that type of education for our children and for for the coming generations. Um, we know it makes sense. Uh, something something's got stuck in in the system, um, but we're, we're we're working on unplugging it. Um, I think. And yeah, if there's anything we can ever do as well, just just let us know because we're we're right behind you and 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 the vision there at Institute of Imagination. It's, it's been great to talk to you, Martin, and um and to, and to and to hear about not just your journey but the the work that you're doing at the moment as well. Um it's fascinating. Um and and yeah, it's obviously making a difference and and yeah, it's let's keep chatting about this and and see where we go. So thanks for joining us on episode two hundred and one. Thank you very much. And, I, and, and I, I know that in the next episode, Ben, not only your mum will be listening, but I will be as well. So don't worry. No, thank, it's, you. It's, thank you for giving us, giving us this opportunity to tell you about what we do. I really appreciate it. We yeah, can no start worries. saying listeners now instead of listener. That, that's brilliant. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> and everybody, don't forget, if you haven't done so already, you can head over to edufuturist.com and you'll find out all about our event on the 4th of May 2023 that we uh, we announced just last week um, you can buy your tickets uh, you can find out about that or you can just go straight over to uprising.ju.mp and book your tickets for what will be a phenomenal event a phenomenal event um, and uh, we know that we're going to have some fun we're going to celebrate our award winners we're going to have yeah great stuff in Leeds in person in real life No Zoom, no online, in person, real life, drinking real beer, eating real food and having a great time. 4th of May 2023, go over and get your tickets for that.